Hey everyone, Port I Sam. Welcome to part one of our Fujimi 124 Ferrari 250 GTO video build. So we reviewed this kit the other day. I stupidly forgot to look through the wheels, so we're going to jump straight in and look at the hose at the beginning. Uh, and the plan today is to get this thing prepped, not bare metal foiled, uh, get it prepped, painted, primed, painted, bare metal foiled, not bare metal foiled, though, because I said I'd never do it again. Technically, I didn't. Decal, give it a panel line wash, and get it in 2K clear by the end of this video. And then we'll come back in part two, uh, do the wheels, that's the first job for next time, and get all our chassis and what have you underway. So like I say, let's get started, let's go and have a look through these wheels before we crack on with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos will always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. Right, so we did a review the other day of all this kit and all the goodies, and we've got two things. Number one, I didn't show you the wheels, nor did we look at the paint. So the paint is there. It's Ferrari Rosso Red from Gravity Color Spain, and these are the Hobby Design wheels um, that are mostly photo etch. So quite daunting looking at these. I've managed to build one kind of off camera. The next one I'll do on camera to show how it was done. But it's basically one of these frets per wheel. So there's a few components to go together. Specific order it goes in. So you need to pay attention to the very vague, typical hobby design instructions. Uh, once you've got all the P together, you've got a centre hub that goes through. You've got the knock-on P to go in, and then that all inserts into this turned aluminium wheel uh, itself. And there's a resin part on the back that will hold the poly cap that holds the wheel in place. So, so apologies for forgetting these last time. Things happen. Mistakes are made. But here we go. That's that rectified. Uh, we get little tyre valves as well, which are interesting. And then the rather vague instruction from the Hoddy design. So as long as you follow the part numbers, use a little bit of intuition, uh, jiggery-pokery and witchcraft, basically, you'll get these together. I've managed to get one together. It looks absolutely spot on. Uh, and we'll show those in part two. So on to the build. So as usual... I've marked any parts that are going to be body color, bar this one under my thumb, because that was a slip of the pen. Uh, we've highlighted it, and we're going to cut all these parts off, clean them all up in preparation for primer. So the bonnet, hood, whatever you want to call it, fits in very, very precisely. Hopefully not too precise, as in when it's 2K, it won't go on. But a quick clean up of 400 UMP thinny stick, and that is good to go, ready for primer. So with this, we're basically going to have the bonnet and the body shell as two separate pieces, which makes it a little bit easier to paint. Uh, we've got a seam line running from the front to the back um, and on the bonnet itself. So just have a look around. You'll need to see them. They are prominent, quite distinguished from the rest of the model. I'm just going to use a 240 grey sponge from Ultimate Modeling Products and just work our way around and get rid of them all nice and slow. I'm not trying to conform or change the shape of the car. We'll just get rid of those pesky seam lines. Once we've done that, we can hit it with a UMP buffer, <clears throat> get it all cleaned up back to nice plastic, and then we can go over with a 3000 Tamiya sanding sponge and get it all keyed, ready for primer. So we've got two little scoops to go on the back. Again, these just need cleaning up. Very quick run over the 400 thinny stick, uh, and then these are glued in place. In situ, there's little marks where they sit on the back bumper. So literally line it up, Pop it in place, and it'll sit all by itself. And I've got my Tamiya Extra Thin EMA Plasti World Mix. Um, I'm just going to load the brush up, not with a ton of it, and just let the capillary action carry that around. Be careful with your finger underneath. Don't get any glue underneath and leave a big smudgy fingerprint on the body. And we'll repeat that for the other side. And once that's dried, we can then go over and we're going to scuff the whole body. Like I say, this is actually the UMP one that we were going to sell. Whether we are still, I don't know. But a 3,000 Tamiya sponge is about the same grit, roughly. And the idea of doing this is we get any imperfections off the plastic, any marks. Uh, we'll also get rid of some fingerprints, glue marks, anything like that. And it gives us a nice keyed surface by making 
hundreds and thousands of micro scratches in the finish, it gives the primer a little bit more surface area to bite into. Does it work? I have no idea. Do professional car painters do it? Yes. Do I do it? Yes. Am I a professional? No. <laughs> Once it's all scuffed over, we've got a toothbrush, a uh, very old Mickey Mouse toothbrush my little boys, and we go around all the panel lines, get rid of any sand and dust and clean it all up. Now at this stage, you will have uh, fingerprints and God only knows what all over the model. So again, go with the anti-static brush now all over it. Uh, and this is where my argument comes in for it's not worth washing the parts before you start building because you're manhandling the parts a bit with a drink in your hand, cigarettes, you know, chewing gum, crisps, whatever, and you're putting those greasy fingerprints on the body. So you're better off cleaning this up. Look how uniformly scuffed all the body is. So that's nice and clean. I'm going to tape it to the Tamiya paint stand, and then we're going to go at this with some Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner, and that will completely degrease all the body, and we will never have to touch the body again with our fingers. So none of this bare plastic will get any greasy fingerprints or any contaminants on them, and this is the way to do it. There is honestly no point in washing sprues. You are completely wasting your time. Wash the parts after and when they are ready for paint. This is much better. Gives a much cleaner finish and it will allow for a much better paint job. Trust me, I've been doing this for quite some time. Yes, years ago when mold release was in abundance on all kits, you need to do it. And this kit, <coughs> if you watch the Wednesday, sorry, the Sunday morning live stream, I commented how greasy the body was. It was covered in a film and no problems at all priming it. I've got some Tamiya pink surface primer here, decanted, thin with Tamiya lacquer, thin with retarder. Um, about 15, 10, 10, 15%, 0.3 apex, uh, 18 psi. I'm going to put down three light coats, building up to a wetter coat at the end on the body. Now, obviously, you may have guessed I've sped this up. I'm not this fast. Uh, and we're just going over there methodically, getting everywhere. We're not hosing on the first coat, making sure it's got those little nooks and crannies, all the grills underneath the wheel arches, and even inside the body as well to make sure we get all the inner parts painted red too. The pink Tamiya primer lays down beautiful. It's a perfect pink color primer for red. It makes red absolutely pop, as you will see by the end of this video. So that's coat number one. I've skipped coat number two, which is basically the same as coat one. And this is the third coat now. This is in uh, double speed as well. And this one's going on a little bit wetter because I find the Tamiya primer likes going a little bit wetter to self-level. And uh, we're not hosing it on. We're not losing any detail, but we're just doing it so we get a nice wet coat 0.3 apex 18 psi you can drop it as low as 13 uh, 14 psi sorry very precise wasn't it 13 uh, and it lays down just absolutely beautiful lacquers are my go-to paints now i have completely switched over with literally about half a dozen water-based paints in my arsenal everything else is lacquer and the same on the bonnet hood wherever you want to call it just three light coats building up to this wetter coat at the end this will then be left overnight and we come back the following morning and flat back our primer. So we've got a well-worn Tamiya 3000 grip sander now. Now, we're not trying to remove the primer. We are lightly scuffing over the top with the sander with barely any pressure to remove any high spots of dust or anything that might appear in our paint job. Now, we are handling this again, so less is more. Not as critical now we've got a primer coat down. Uh, but worth a wipe over with a clean, dry bit of tissue. I won't put anything on the tissue at the end, and then obviously hit it with the toothbrush and the anti-static brush at the end too. So all these uh, key components and ways will ensure and help you get the perfect paint job. Now we've got the Gravity Color Spain Rosso Red. This is a beautiful color. I use this on that 16 scale Fujimi uh, 288 GTO we did a while back. It's a lovely color. Now... It's not that hot, but I would still put it down in nice, thin coats. We've got our 0.3 Apex. We're about 14 PSI on this now. I've lowered it down a little bit. Uh, we're going to put probably eight very light coats on, alternate between side to side and up and down, and getting all those little nooks and crannies, and just getting nice, even coats on each time around. Now, I'm going to speed this up because it's a very lengthy process, probably takes me a good couple of hours applying this many coats, but trust me, taking your time at this stage pays off in dividends, you will end up with a much nicer paint job, and the paint job at the end of this build, 
speaks a thousand words. It really does. Even I was proud of this paint job. So although I'm going at like four times speed here, I'm still really taking my time. As you see, the paint's not even remotely going on wet. That's the worst thing you can do with this type of paint. All these automotive type paints are hot, some more than others, and they will eventually, even if you're one of that, I've never had a problem brigade, you will at some point have one of these craze the plastic. And it's not the primer, makes no difference what primer it is. It's the hot lacquer burning through the primer and etching itself into the plastic. So the safest primer to use is a water-based like UMP primer. I like Tamiya just because I've moved over to lacquers. Mr. Surfacer uh, is fine as well. But it's key to just put down light coats. You're in no rush. The longer you take doing this paint job, the better it will look. So like I said, this is a couple of hours of painting here. We're probably on about, I'm going to guess about coat number three or four here. We're about halfway through. And you can see the color is getting some real depth. And then I think this is our final coat. Just look at that red. Absolutely beautiful. Rosso red. Just nice thin coats. It is almost flawless. Absolutely flawless. Beautiful paint color. Beautiful paint job. And uh, really nice kit as well. This really high quality body. No flaws in the body. Um, no real sink marks either. Couldn't find a single sink mark on it. Uh, it's actually quite a nice quality kit. But just to ensure you get all those wheel arches, all in those vents, all the little nooks and crannies. Uh, I like to spray underneath through to the windows and what have you. But there we go. That's probably eight light coats on everything. Alternate between up and down, side to side coats in a crisscross pattern. Now, I vowed to never burn metal foil again uh, after the calamity with the Super B. But this isn't burn metal foil. This is the Hasegawa mirror finish film that Peter very kindly sent me all the way from Japan. I've heard conflicting stuff about it. So I thought, do you know what? In for a penny, in for a pound. Let's try it. So cut a little sliver off. We've got a brand new blade in our Tamiya knife. If you've never used a Tamiya design and I think it's craft knife, I love these knives. They are brilliant. A nice fresh blade in there. And then we put it in place. I'm going to show the back window being done in its entirety. So stand by. This may take a while. I'm going to show the very first piece going on and how I do it. So we've laid the metal foil over the top with plenty of excess either side and longer than we want it now if you're pedantic you could put the join piece right in the corner of the windows i'm not a pedantic so mine's just going to go wherever it lies i've got a a pointy cotton bud here um, to get this into the panel line just gently run it over but the best way to do it is to get a fresh cocktail stick one of our sanders and round the end off now i got this tip off somebody a while back that's a good little tip just round off the end so you lose the sharpness of the cocktail stick and this is the perfect tool for pushing the foil home now this is different to bare metal foil it's a different material it's a lot more stretchy it's more vinyl like like i say i've heard conflicting reports of people saying they struggle with it they didn't like it for me it went down perfect really well it conformed really well into all the panel lines it was a little bit tougher to cut than Burn Metal 4 because it's a different kind of film. Um, but wow, what a finish it left. It knocks socks off Burn Metal 4. I will probably release this as a separate video uh, as a how-to because I do get asked all the time. This is a much better quality mirror finish foil. Now, this technique's exactly the way I do my Burn Metal foil to the letter. So it's no different. But I just think there's a higher quality foil that gives a much more realistic chrome finish. And I found it no more difficult to apply than burn metal foil. In fact, it was easier because this stuff actually sticks down. So once you've scored through, through the panel line with a nice sharp new blade, get a fresh cotton bud and just lightly push that down into the panel line. Use a little bit of force, not a lot. Just run it over gently and just burnish it all down. And there we go. It should be crinkle, wrinkle free, which it is. And then in the corners, just put a little tiny nick in it. There you go. And there. And then you can always put one in the middle of your want as well. And then get your finger and roll it around the edge and go form it underneath. And it's as simple as that. That is it. And then the next piece is I do the bottom next and then the two sides. And they meet up. Once it's all burnished down, you can barely, barely even see the joins. 
and this stuff just looked great. So I've got some more on the way, thanks to a very kind viewer, Philip. Uh, he says he's going to send me a couple of packs. Uh, you can't get it in the UK readily, so you're going to have to get it from overseas. But wow, what a difference. And underneath, just make sure it's all fully conformed down, and you can trim off any excess later. Now, I've sped this bit up just because we'll be here all day. Exactly the same process. Burnish it down with a cotton bud. Get your rounded over cocktail stick. Push it into the panel line. I'm multitasking here. We're live streaming. I think this was yesterday morning. And then your nice fresh blade and just carefully, a little bit of pressure, follow the indentation of the window. Don't slip because you'll mark your paint. And then grab your tweezers and gently lift the edge of the uh, film and pull it back. And then get your cotton bud again. Burnish it all down. And then a little slit in the edge. If you need to cut a little bit more, don't be afraid to cut a little bit more off. A couple of slits, roll it over. Job done. There's the bottom piece done. And then the sides, exactly the same process as before. So I thought I'd show one in full. That way you all can see how it's done, how simple and easy it is. It's really not something to be daunted by, whether you're using bare metal foil or the Hasegawa stuff. You can even use tin foil, I believe, although I would find tin foil a little bit thin, uh, thick. Sorry. This stuff, though, has got the perfect mirror finish for chrome. It looks absolutely brilliant. It's by far the best I've used. Uh, I refuse to use bare metal foil anymore. Bare metal foil is just absolutely rubbish. It has no adhesive quality to it. Um, the last I've got about six sheets just absolutely wasted. And it's not cheap stuff, and it's not easy to get hold of either. So a bit of a nightmare, really. But hey, it is what it is. We live and learn. We move on to new and better products, which I think this is. I think this is what I'll be using from now on. Uh, you can see the difference in the chrome finish. It's lovely. It really, really is nice. But just be careful with your knife. It's so easy to slip out that little panel line off the window and mark your paint. I've done it so many times. Um, just really take your time going around and just keep burnishing it down. Use your cotton bud, nice clean cotton bud. Just keep burnishing it down. Like I say, put a little angled nick in the corner and use your finger to roll over. So no problems with adhesion at all. No problems with it conforming. It's a little bit more difficult to cut. I think it needs a little bit more force to do. Um, but like I say, it's the exact same process as bare metal form. Like I say, I will release this as a separate video, and that way there's always a guide there I can link or show people. Um, but wow, I probably spend probably an hour, an hour and a half doing this, maybe on the whole car. There's the front, rear, and the two side windows. Uh, we've got some other chrome parts to do as well, but they're mostly going to be PE. Um, the PE kit did come with some uh, PE silver surrounds for the windows, but I don't think it would have conformed properly. So this for me works a little bit better, and uh, I'm happy doing this this way. So there we go. Let's score through. Slit, slit, fold over. Burnish it down. And then roll it under. Like I say, you can trim off any excess underneath just with your knife. And here we go. we we'll zoom in for you. You can have a little look, a bit of a wobble. I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Much higher quality than bare metal foil. Much, much nicer. Look at that. What a chrome finish that is. Absolutely wonderful. Very happy with that. So there we go. Decals. There is literally three decals to go on this. I use one of the decal casts, uh, rectangular for our logos for the front, only because I wrecked the Fujimi one. It felt a bit on me. So line it up. There's a little raised portion on the front of the bonnet, and then the two Ferrari shields sit on the side. Look at reference pictures of the car to get them in the right place, because we did see a lot of these with the decal, well, the badge in the wrong place. And standard decal procedure. Just um, get the decal down, hit it with UMP solutions, and leave it be. And there we go. So next up is panel line wash. I missed a little bit of grey with a little bit of black. To get a really nice dark grey panel line. I'm just going to touch it to all the panel lines. There's not a lot on this. So it didn't really take long at all. And just let the capillary action carry this all the way around. 
like I say, if it'll hold a wash, I tend to put a wash in it. It's quite simple, really. Um, and then you let it dry. It takes about half hour, 40 minutes, depending on how warm it is in your modeling area. But my theory is if it can hold a wash, pop a wash in it. Black would be too dark. A dark gray is better. Gray itself would be too light. So, like I say, I think dark gray, mix them both together. They're enamel washes, they mix really easy. Uh, I think a dark gray is the way to go myself. So, like I say, in a warmish cave, warmish area, this will take about half an hour to dry. If you catch it just as it's drying, you don't even need any uh, odorless mineral spirits to get it off. If you get a little bit of the wash as it's drying on the cotton bud, it will take any other wash off with it as well. It kind of reactivates itself if you run it over. But if in doubt, use some Windsor & Newton, Santador, or any other odorless mineral spirits you've got to take it off. Like I say, put the wash on, put it on one side for half an hour, and leave it be. And then you can come back, and with some cotton buds and some care, you can go around and remove all the wash. Now, one thing I would say, and I always say this, if you think you've got all the wash off, put it down five minutes, come back, have another look, and I bet you will find somewhere you've missed wash. I do it all the time. And as I always jokingly say, it's normally just as I'm spraying the tack coat, for the 2k i see a little bit on the rear bumper and think ah, damn missed it so go around get all the wash off get a bit of tissue wipe it all over put it down on the bench come back 10 minutes later have a little look and i bet you'll find somewhere you've missed and there we go all decaled up chrome finished foil all around the windows which i think look absolutely fantastic uh, it's a little bit of wash we're gonna get rid of there it's all decaled and we've got our panel line wash in place as well and here we go. This was this morning's job at 9 o'clock. I was out in the spray booth, 2K in the car. Now, I always wet the surface. This is a fresh, cleaned out, empty spray booth. Or Everything's out of there. We've got fresh kitchen paper down. We've got a fresh filter in the booth. My room has been hoovered the day before. Uh, I've got double gloves on. I've got my arms covered. Uh, I've got my full face respirator on. And the window is open with this extractor going as well. So we've got 9 mil of 2K clear, and this was just enough for this because I waste a lot of mine over spraying the car. So we're mixing that with 3 mil of the activator. This is Gravity Colors Spain 2K clear. So 9 mil of clear, 3 mil of activator, and 3 mil of thinner, which is a 3 to 1 to 1 mix. So pop the activator in, make sure the pipette's empty, give it a good stir up to get the chemical reaction underway. And then throw it away. We're never going to use that pipette ever again. And then we've got some thinner. This bottle was empty, so I have to go grab another one quickly. And we're going to pop in 3 mil of thinner. So I do a 2 and a 1. That makes it easier. Rather than trying to get 3 in a pipette, which is quite difficult to do, I go that route. And then pull your lids on, put everything out of the way, and give this a really good mix-up. Again, to get it all equally mixed and properly thinned and ready for 2K. You'll notice it may go a little bit cloudy. Just keep staring at it until it goes clear again. And that is it fully mixed. Nice and simple. It's a good 2K clear coat. This I've used it for a couple of years now, I think. And it's proven to be the best I've used. And although I am told it does not need straining at all, I still do just have a matte core. So I've got 190 micron strainer. Pour this into a clean medicine cup. And then with the anti-static brush, again, we're throwing away that pipette. We'll never use that again. Just make sure we've got everything off the body. There's no dust. Or anything knocking around. Just making sure that little bit of bare metal foil there is properly curved over the body, which it is. There we go. We're looking good. Like I say, these anti-static brushes from Tamiya are well worth the money. They do work very well. They clean the, uh, the models up really well. And I do find it helps in keeping the dust off. I think it does kind of add a anti-static property to it. Well, obviously, there's other brushes you can use. But for me, I like the Tamiya stuff. It does work well. As you can see, we've got the model taped to the, um, the stand as well. So it doesn't fall off. And my stand is screwed to the base. Because these are going to have it falling off at the most inopportune time. And I don't want that with a freshly 2K body. We've got a 0.2 mil apex with 24 PSI. And we're going to put down a tack coat. Now, I made a mistake today. I've been putting thinner coats on lately. And I don't know what happened. I think it's because I was rushing to get ready to go live. Um, I sprayed it the old way. I always did by putting heavier coats down. I've got a couple of runs 
when I came back in. Ooh, who were? Um, but after it settled again, they kind of vanished. So I think I ended up with one little run on the back end, which we'll leave for a day, sand that off, and then leave it to fully harden over the next week or so. So yeah, I would have been heavy handed today. Just wasn't paying attention at all. Uh, silly me. But still got a nice 2k job out of it. Still looked great. In fact, it looked fantastic at the end. Um, so the idea of the taco is you put a thin layer on. It's not supposed to be wet. Just how it is there. So it's like a semi-matte gloss look. And what that does, as you leave that for 10 minutes, that will go unbelievably tacky. And when you come in for your wetter coats, um, this will minimize the amount um, or any runs you should get because the newer clear coat will stick and cling to the uh, tacky coat. That's the idea of it. Same for the next coat. We'll do a uh, wetter coat. Leave that for 10 minutes. Come back. And again, it'll tack up and hold and hopefully prevent any runs. We do get a couple, like I say. Thankfully, some of them vanished all on their own, just from the gravitational pull, pulling the clear down the body. Um, but we did end up with one slight one on the back. Nothing too bad. We can sand it out. It'll probably be gone. I'm going to go back and have a look. So there's coat number one on the body. We'll do the same to the bonnet. And again, I'm showing the whole thing in its full process today. So you can sit back and watch. I'll stick a little bit of music on as well so you can do. So the first coat's a tack coat. That's there for 10 minutes. Second coat is a wetter coat. And again, that's that for 10 minutes. And the third coat is our wet coat. And how that is left at the end is exactly how it will look when we're done. So you need to ensure there's no orange peel. So it's basically putting down enough paint to get rid of the orange peel without causing runs. It's a fine balance, but the more you do it, the more you get used to it. Right then, with the second coat down, you can see we've got a nice glossy finish. We've got a couple of specks of dust, which is just inevitable, sadly. We'll have to flat and sand those out later. Um, but yeah, the second coat, like I said, I got a bit heavier than I should have, really. I was doing much thinner coat, especially on the last coat in a bit. But hey, it is what it is, and it still looked great at the end. And the final coat. So we're putting down, slow down the coat a little bit, come back a little bit. And we'll put a little bit more down, because say at the end of this is exactly how it will look when it's dry. So if you've got orange peel, you're more likely to have orange peel when it dries. You want a nice glass-like surface without getting any runs. And like I say, it takes a bit of practice to get used to, and even though I've done this God knows how many times, I still managed to get runs as I did today because I wasn't concentrating and my mind was elsewhere. So like I say, just take your time, you'll get used to it. The more you do, the better you'll get. But this looked absolutely fantastic at the end. So like I say, put enough paint down just to ensure you get a nice glossy finish with no orange peel.
And there we go. So that's our third coat down. Let's have a quick look around for any blemishes. So we do have a bit of dust in the roof. That's just sod's law, unfortunately. A little bit in the boot lid as well, but it's just one of those. We can flat those later and take care of them. No problem at all. So what I like to do now is I pop this in its case. So you can see a little box to my left. It's sitting there. I'll leave for five minutes. going to put the very last coat on the bonnet, which we literally had one spray left in the brush at the end of this that was just enough to get a perfect finish. And I mean just enough. It just became flawless on the very last coat. And you'll see my airbrush stop. I'll wait for a second to let any settle in the airbrush. Just give it one little last pssst. And that's it. You can see there we've got a beautiful clear coat. Mirror finish. There you go. There's a the last little blast. And there we go. A little bit of dust in there as well. But again, we can take care of that. Like I say, I'll pop that in the box. Leave that for 10 minutes. This is it just afterwards. This is probably, hmm, it's about an hour later. We're back. And uh, yeah, she's looking good. Beautiful clear coat. The red is stunning. Beautiful deep red. Decals are fine. We've got our bare metal foil, uh, mirror finish foil. It's looking great through the clear coat. And you see there, there's a little bit of run on the back there, but that kind of vanishes. It's really weird. It must just keep settling as we go. Um, and yeah, happy with that finish. A few specks of dust, but hey, it is what it is. And there's a few pictures of talking. You can see how glass-like it is. It's turned out great. The bare metal foil, the Hasegawa foil looks great. Um, stick decals, no problem at all. Like I say, other than a few specks of dust and that one run, uh, it's pretty flawless. It's pretty flawless. Real shame about that on the roof, but it is what it is. We'll give that a week and then we can flat it and polish it all and get it back to a much nicer finish. So beautiful red. Really well worth taking the time to get this paint finish. This will have settled more and more of the day as it's dried. I think it takes 24 hours to fully cure. Uh, and the whole time it's doing it, it is self-leveling. There we are. We are all done. Now, other than a few specks of dirt and one run on the back, look at it's underneath, you can't really see it, so we can get rid of that really easily. Uh, that's come out really well. Silly me didn't do it, the 2K where I've been doing it for the past couple of goes, which was nice light thin coats at the end. Uh, I was in a bit of a rush this morning to get the live stream up, so I think I was a bit distracted and I kind of wasn't paying attention and uh, did it the old way with heavier coats, but luckily it worked out just fine, bar that little run. Um, Looks fantastic. The Rosso Red, absolutely really vibrant with the pink primer. Beautiful Gravity Colors paint and that Gravity Colors 2K Clear came out really well. And that Hasegawa Mirror Finish Foil, wow, that stuff looks amazing. Looks really, really good. And uh, I'm happy how it turned out. So, a great start to this new build. Uh, I'm eagerly looking forward to getting on to step two, or part two, but I kind of said I'd go back to the bike next. I kind of don't think I want anything. I want to crack on the GTO a little bit. Bike's a bit of a long time, slow burn, and we'll get to that as we get to it. Uh, so I think we'll crack on with the GTO and we'll get to it. I've got a bench update to do in a couple of days, probably. Uh, and I'll get some reviews out as well for the uh, the patrons that are of tier three and higher. Uh, you'll get to choose some reviews to do by looking through my stash and some suggestions, which Alan very kindly of suggested the 12 scale Porsche Carrera, which is an immensely complicated and mega full box so thank you for that one alan we'll see if we do that we'll do it as a live premiere and see if we can get some uh, live views on it um so yeah we'll see how that one goes <laughs> so there we are if you have any comments or questions pop them down below uh and as always like support the channel uh the content rather there's a patreon me a paypal me and a buy me coffee in the description down below as long as a whole host of links uh to everything ism and me related the forum, Facebook page, the live stream page, offer hangout group, uh, my scalemates, my affiliate link, products I use, email address to get in touch with me, and my scalemates links, which I think I've already said. I meant to say my poor ISM modeling page is there as well. There we are. Question for today hmm. Do you have any modeling regrets? Is there something you wish you could have built? And didn't and now you can't get the kit is there something you did build and wish you didn't because it was terrible or it went wrong or is there something you built and wish you'd done slightly different maybe a different color different process let me know in the comments down below for me hmm let me have a think i can't really think of it i did a subaru brz and like a bmw purpley color I kind of regretted that because it didn't really suit the car 
Uh, and one thing I definitely regret is selling a lot of the built models at that display case, which I'm gutted I did. And a lot of unbuilt models when times were hard and I needed money and I've sold them and I really shouldn't have. So they're my regrets. Um, what have been why? So let me know yours in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of the latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up and leave a comment. I'd love reading all your comments and I will see you for part two very soon. So take care everyone. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Bye bye.